You ready? You ready to party? Yeah. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> All right. Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for um, uh, joining us tonight. And um, I'm super excited to have our first featured guest artist uh, here to talk um, with uh, Shut Up and Draw. And um, that is Adrienne Allaby. And she has been a friend of mine for, for quite a while. And it was kind of a no brainer to, to invite her to do this and be a guinea pig for the first one. So um, here she is with us. And, um, you know, I've been a huge, huge fan of her work. Um, she probably didn't know how much of a fan <laughs> until we talked a few weeks ago um, about this. But um, I, I've, I've been always impressed and amazed with her work and the progression. Uh, I've seen it go through over the years. And that's something that I wanted to share with, um, with the group here on Facebook, um, because that's the kind of stuff that gets me inspired to want to wanna make art and um you know I, i'm not gonna say a whole lot more um, because i'd rather her kind of jump in and talk about it but um the format for tonight is going to be uh, an, a, a somewhat brief artist talk that adrian's going to give it's going to be you know probably 20 to 30 minutes and then after that we will open it up for q a so if you have any questions um just go ahead and, and uh post them as a comment and we'll uh we'll get to them uh, after that so without further ado adrian alibi hi everybody um and thank you brian that's so great to hear and so flattering and you know of course every artist wants to hear that they have fans and have people that respect their work so Thank you for saying all those great things. Um, the feeling is mutual. You're also a great artist and I admire everything you do as well. And uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity to talk in a different forum. I've never given a talk in through Facebook Live. I'm a teacher, so I am very used to speaking in front of people, but I'm used to doing it, well, lately I'm used to doing it through Zoom. Um, and I am used to talking to students so I always get a little more nervous when I'm, I'm speaking to adults, right? I guess I teach college, so my students are adults, but um, they're students, they're actively trying to learn. And I feel like in this situation, there might be more people who are, are professionals in creative fields and they're just kind of looking for extra inspiration. So I hope you get a little bit of that tonight. Um, I don't know what else I'll say about myself. I guess I'll start sharing my screen and I'll try to keep it short. I do have a lot of images, but what I'll do is I'll I'll try to get through them a little bit more quickly. And if there's anything that it seems like people want me to stop on, um, you can say something in chat and I can always talk about one a little bit more. So uh, Brian, should I go ahead and just share the screen to start? Uh, yes, go for it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Wayne, uh, Wayne uh, jumped in and he, uh, he said, what are you waiting for? Get to talking about art. So he must have jumped in when we were blabbing and stalling. Um, <clears throat> Nancy, who's part of the club, is also here. So she's excited. And um, cool. that's awesome. Glad to have you guys. All right. I'm going to hand it back over. <clears throat> okay. So I think... Okay, I, I'm supposed to be sharing my screen. Can you guys see it? Yeah, it's it's working. Okay, so now you just see the whole slide. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, this is interesting too, because I noticed I have the live cam like out of the corner of my eye and there's a time lag. So I think people aren't going to hear us until like, you know, a little after what's been said, but... Anyways, um, I'll go ahead and talk. Oh, wow, my slide background changed color for some reason. This should be interesting. So uh, my name is Adrian, and I'm going to talk a little bit about my uh, experience as an artist and my evolution to the kind of images that I make. Uh, I'm deciding to start with a little picture of myself and just a smattering of works from different periods. Uh, that little photo on the right is a photograph of me working at a residency in Thailand that got me really interested in uh, non-Western art and patterns and architecture. 
the image on the left is uh, an example of things I did in graduate school, which were very much influenced by science fiction movies and horror movies and uh, kind of creating these surrealistic landscapes. And that's an oil painting. And the middle one is technically a drawing. So I've, I consider myself more of a drawer now and mostly work on paper with a combination of water-based paints like acrylic and watercolor and color pencil. And I noticed actually, Brian, like putting together my slideshow for this, I noticed how actually I bounce back and forth between more realistic work and more abstract work. And I didn't really realize how much I do that until I was kind of compiling all these images together. Um, so well, that, there's, can you hear me? I, I didn't want to yeah. jump in and interrupt, but that's, oh, yeah. that's half of the, well, that's probably actually most of the fascination I have with your art is you, you balance those two things so well. And you, um, I, I think that's hard to do and it's not, it's probably not natural or it doesn't come easy uh, for everybody. So it is it, totally fascinating that you have such an organic, um, uh, side of things and then a very geometric and representational and um and and non-representational and so th that's that's a that's just a huge asset that you have in your uh, practice so there you go <laughs> thanks i mean sometimes it it annoys me i'm like i wish i could narrow it down and maybe hone in on a more simple not a simple is a horrible world word like economic or more I don't know, economic style, I guess, but, oh, I lost my mouse for a second. Um, but, you know, that's what it is. I like variety. I'm just, I love variety. And I kind of switched my slide a little bit too fast. But um, after just a little introduction to, <coughs> excuse me, some of the work I've done, I wanted to go way back and just kind of show you my origins which I feel like the more I work as an artist, I kind of go back more and more to my childhood. And I think it's really interesting to be an artist because I feel like artists are automatically more connected to their child childhood in a certain way. Like we're, um, we're still doing the thing that most of us did as a child, but got trained out of. And I feel lucky that I'm able to just still be in that world of creativity and imagination. So um, I'm also one of those people that's drawn since the time I was little as this artwork shows. Uh, some of my first, um, I guess you could say exposures to art were books like this. My, my dad just happened to have a book of <coughs> art by the famous uh, fantasy illustrator Boris Vallejo lying around the house. He also had a Frank Frazetta one. So I, I got really obsessed with their beautiful, amazing, realistic fantasy paintings. Um, obviously, most little girls, at least in my generation, <laughs> drew women like this, like models and Barbies and very idealistic women, which is a whole other topic. But <clears throat> I thought it'd be interesting for you to see my my interpretation of that and some of the first things I drew. And now I think it's interesting as a teacher because I feel like um, with students, sometimes they learn the most when I assign them a project where they copy another artist's work and you really learn how to maybe recreate a certain style by copying. Um, and it also shows that bias when we're kids, you know, we're all taught that good drawing is realistic drawing and Little kids are prone to, you know, trying to copy these other things that they see. So there's one of my first drawings. Oh gosh, that's not the right. Oh no, never mind. I was looking at the date of the original artwork. I was like, wait, I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> um, and I still have, and I'm glad, you know, I, I also was lucky I had parents that despite not being artists themselves, they always fostered and encouraged me to be an artist. They recognized that I loved doing it at a really young age. And I even taught people when I was young, like I would teach them how to draw Shira during recess. 
So I've been drawing and teaching for a really long time. So I wanted to go all the way back to that. And, you know, fast forward to this painting at the top. I did it in graduate school. And I, you know, I went all through um, my young years, all through elementary school, high school, taking art classes. I went to community college at Cuesta, at, who has a really good art program. And after two years there, it really cemented that I wanted to major in art. So I transferred to UC Santa Barbara. And um, Brian, one of your questions was like, you know, a seminal, oh, a single sketch or piece that set the stage for your body of work. I actually have another slide for that, yeah. but I feel like I have this moment of like kind of epiphany that just kind of changed my work and my direction. And it was when I was an undergraduate studying art in Santa Barbara. And I found this book at a thrift store of electron microscope photographs. And I just became obsessed with uh, microbiology or those kinds of images that show you things that you don't know actually exist or they're, it's hard to believe they exist. And I'd already been really into sci-fi and fantasy illustration. And I started to think about how there's things in our real world that look, you know, supernatural or they look out of this world, but they're real. And so I got really interested just in that idea. I made a series of drawings that um, were based on like diatoms and other microscopic forms. And a professor encouraged me to make a series of those. And then later when I got into grad school at Cal State Long Beach, I actually left out that I, at the end of UCSB, where I found this kind of newfound source of inspiration, I decided I wanted to study biomedical illustration. So I went to CSULB, Cal State Long Beach, because uh, they have a program. I think they still have the program there. I started it, but I didn't finish it um, to be a biomedical illustrator. I realized kind of quickly that I didn't just want to copy imagery realistically. I, I realized I had to, I, I never wanted to copy things in a straightforward way or do straightforward realism. I always wanted to transform it somehow. So um, I started making these landscapes that were very much influenced by, of course, you can probably see like fantasy illustration. They look like kind of these post-apocalyptic landscapes, but they're also look like they're landscapes that could be of an exterior space or maybe even landscapes of the inside of the body. So I got really interested in this idea of spaces and how these vast external micro macro spaces can look like this, you know, a really small space inside of a cell or inside of a body. So, you know, like there's this thing that looks like clouds kind of turning into a heart. And I've always looked at a lot of images. So the painting might look like it's totally imagined, but I've always collected um, images a, a lot. Like I keep files and files of images, uh, photographs that I've taken, images from magazines. So hopefully you can see a little bit of the connection of the image on the bottom left. That's I think a photograph that I took of a sea anemone at, a, at an aquarium and just like the configuration of those creatures and their textures and their colors I, I took some of those aspects and then incorporated it into something like this oil painting. Yeah, I, I, I was just going to chime in. <clears throat> I could definitely see the the connection there. Is that so? Is that piece? Would you consider that the the pivotal piece that kind of set you on on the path that you followed, or is that is there you a know, different this piece? One? Yeah, this one I don't think is the pivotal piece, but I do see the like my discovery of that electron microscope yeah. book, yeah, at, like a pivotal moment. But it kind of took me a while, and I'm glad you asked that because the reason I don't consider this necessarily pivotal is that I I was into doing these oil paintings, and you might see that it looks like this one on the left is in the same yeah. body of work. And they're maybe like a little more vivid, the color's a little more deep. Maybe you can tell that 
this is an oil painting, whereas these have the, the transparency of the paper showing through. So there's a little different quality. And so I kind of started in oils, like as an art student, whoops, that was my kind of like first medium, which is kind of odd. And, you know, I got really into these and I, I loved making these surrealistic landscapes, but then I did get to a point where I got a little bit sick of it. And I felt like with oil, I tend to work really obsessively. Like I have a really high amount of patience and I can spend a long time rendering things. So with oils, um, I, I tended to just kind of like blend and blend and blend. And I couldn't really be free or experimental with oil paint. Just like the nature of the medium, I felt like I couldn't like break free of this style because, you know, I, I painted things like this for a few years and then, uh, you know, it, I was in graduate school and in graduate school, in art school, they're always trying to get you to like to change and open up and be original, you know, change up your style, think of new ideas. Yeah, we talked so, about that in our phone call and how that trips yeah, you up as you an know, artist. That, yeah. And at the time, you know, it was probably, you know, maybe, oops, sorry that I accidentally did that. Um, it maybe was looking, I, I, maybe for some of the professors at the school, it was looking a little too much like older fantasy illustration. And, you know, one of my professors suggested like, hey, why don't you just start, you know, like working on paper and just like dripping, splattering, pouring paint around you know, just to do something to just kind of free yourself up. And so that's where this drawing came from. So this is the one that's like the, the single piece that set the stage for my body of work that I felt like was kind of the first of my drawings that have like the washes with the colored pencil. And it initially started from just really experimental techniques of dripping and pouring and splattering paint. And then I would go into certain areas and render them a little more um, with color pencil. Yeah, so this you can leads, probably... uh, uh, Sorry, I was just going to say this kind of cool. leads into the other question I had, which is how does like how do you embrace chance and spontaneity into the into the process? And it sounds like this is that almost was the the beginning of this path was was using um splatter and and kind of random marks as a beginning like a starting point for your your art and then you would you is that is that accurate yes yes okay. definitely okay yeah and, and and i think it was I, I think it is really important with any material to just really experiment with it and get to know kind of the limits of it because you can get you know, so many different effects from applying the paint in different ways. Like I was just used to, you know, the very traditional, like you dip your brush in paint, you use a brush to get it on the canvas and you like blend to make everything look really pretty and get these gradations of light and shadow. And so I felt like it really opened up the vocabulary of like marks and, and the kinds of textures that I could get, you know, like some things I could still get those really soft gradations with how like the watercolor would bleed through the paper, but then I could go into a certain area like here on the left where the burgundy colors like just filled in with color pencil. And then these little lines are made with, you know, a highly sharpened color pencil. So I could get these really hard graphic edges, but then also get these other kinds of textures. So I really liked that about using different materials together and layering and just starting something with chance. Like you can probably even see in here where like here, the green, yeah, totally. under, yeah, the orange is like green drips, but then here it's, you know, drawn over and, and blended a little bit more. So there's certain parts where you can just see the drips of the paint and other parts where it gets more, um, specifically rendered. So I really liked doing that. Um, that led me into kind of like, I've been doing that kind of work basically since that point, but with just slight variations. So <clears throat> I have, uh, 
you know, that one, this one that I showed, I think I really just started without looking at anything. And, and then at a certain point, and, and I still do this now, whenever I'm working on something, I'll kind of go back and forth between just being really free and doing something experimental. And then at a certain point, I'll get a little bit sick of that, like almost feel like, you know, too much freedom isn't very interesting. So I'll need to find an image or maybe it's my, you know, kind of overarching concept for the body of work that leads me to find certain images that then I start to reference to kind of to re render certain parts of the, the piece. So this one's a little more experimental. And then another technique that I use is I love using collage. And I'm actually forgetting, or maybe I just don't know when I made my first collage. I guess it may have been for this body of work, which I actually made for a specific show. And they wanted the artist to make a work that had some kind of relationship to the environment. And it was for the Santa Barbara Contemporary Arts Forum. So I made a work that was about um, like, areas of the county where nature came up against man-made things. And uh, this one was about like the aquatic life in the Pacific off the coast of Santa Barbara. So, you know, instead of like, you know, painting an un underwater scene of the ocean, I found images of different creatures that you would find, but then I, I would take the photos and cut them up and, and put them all together. And I found collage is also a really great way to abstract, like instantly abstract an image, like taking a photo and instead of just copying it, yep. you can put it back together again. And it's automatically, to me, a, a little more interesting to look at. And I just realize I'm, I'm very biased with to abstract work. I kind of like things that I, that don't totally make visual sense and are, Is you know, this is this the only piece that you started with a collage? No, I, I started. Okay. A, yeah, I did a whole series of these. I, I just picked one so you could see. Okay. Hopefully, you can tell. Obviously, the one on the left is the collage. Well, that's and re that's a relief because <laughs> this is so cool. This is like one of my favorite. Not only is it one of my favorite uh, renderings that you did on the right, but to the the collage. Uh, in and of itself is so fascinating and then to see the two com uh, side by side it's it, it's just i i can't stop looking back and forth at at both of them um i yeah I, I think collage is so i think it's perfect for what you do because <clears throat> like you were just starting to say it you can you start with something representational a, a photo of a fish or whatever and the second you start cutting it now you're you're abstracting it um immediately and so i i think it's such a good metaphor for what your process and what your your sub your interests and your sensibilities are so yeah this is this is awesome yeah it's fun and it's something that's good to do too like you know i feel like as an artist there's kind of different studio modes like some days you wake up and like i'm not quite ready to do like the heavy detail work on a piece but i just want to kind of do a little study or a little experiment and collage can be really good for those days like just a way to kind of like something that doesn't involve i, I this is horrible to say like a lot of thinking i guess and it's a little bit more like pure experimentation and maybe it doesn't require as much like i don't know manual like, labor it doesn't require yeah, manual labor or, <laughs> yeah, what I do is all physical collage. You also asked me about my, um, this kind of goes well with that question about process. Like, do you sketch before your final pieces or do you do digital mock-ups or anything? And I'm, I'm horribly inept at any digital media. Uh, I'm actually excited. I, I'm hoping with Procreate, I can actually start learning because I, I, I've been waiting for the technology to get closer and closer to putting an implement on a surface and now you can actually draw on a screen yeah so i'm excited to start doing that and i uh, hoping i can generate like a lot of ideas and color changes and things like that faster but 
Um, yeah, all the collages I have done so far are physical, but it also, it does, I, for me, art is very tactile and I do like the feeling of like cutting paper and the pencil dragging on the paper and the like watercolor, like blending into the paper. Like I, I, I do like that. So I haven't gotten as into digital media, but I, I think it's a great tool and I want to use it more. Um, so this is also, this is kind of a similar series. I realize maybe I should go with this one first. I had all these things planned and now I'm not looking at my notes at all. Um, where this one also had a very detailed collage that looked similar to the final drawing, but I only included one of the photos to just give a little bit about um, inspiration. So sometimes my inspiration is, you know, very vague. Um, and I think you asked a question about that too. Like, is your inspiration external or internal? Y yeah. <laughs> Cause we just had this that. conversation in the, in the drawing club. So I thought I'd, I'd throw that one at you. <laughs> and okay. I came up with an answer. I said, I was thinking about it. I feel like it's a really interesting question and I feel like it, it's all essentially internal because I feel like what you're internally drawn to, like it's your internal, you know, personality. <clears throat> yeah. It determines what subject matter you're gravitating towards, what you want to make art about. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. It's almost a trick question, but <clears throat> I've seen answers that are, um, very logical and, and kind of explain why an internal uh, source of inspiration might be more sustainable versus something external. It was actually interesting because it brought up, I guess, a lot of the um, the challenges that I face because I'm, I'm too inspired by everything. So it becomes a little bit uh, paralyzing. So, um, you know, if you have your own, I know some artists just, they have something, they have a vision or a, a worldview or, or like a very uh, focused uh, idea of what they want to put out there. And, it, you know, they're not hindered or, or, or they don't really waver based on what's going on uh, around them. And, you know, they're, they're, I'm sure they're taking in that information and it's showing up subtly in their work, but... Um, I think maybe that's just the that was the angle of that question is like do you really rely a lot on looking at other artwork or other or just things in nature or you know just where where does that where what are you doing when you feel most inspired or what are you looking at when you think of you know or get the urge to to create an image yeah and i think I might have a little bit of the same problem you do and that I, I do feel like I kind of get inspired by everything. Like, yeah. and I kind of like it almost like that, the time that I had that show where they kind of gave me like an external, you know, subject that I had to kind of stay within, but maybe yeah. execute my own style was really nice, but yes. I do struggle with like, you know, I'm interested in everything, but in that sense, I feel like all art, like visual art is like a diary of the artist. Like I do, the older I get, I feel like my work, I do kind of insert little things like from my day-to-day -day life or from the news or even just kind of like the way the style changes, I think is inspired by external things going on around me. Totally. But I guess I do always retain, like I think... I will kind of always retain a similar formal style. Mm -hmm. Even in this one, it's like there's things that are very rendered, things that are, are really loose and expressive. And I, I like that tension. And I think I'll always keep that in there, but it might change a little bit. Um, but like, you know, sometimes like some of the early ones that were just like, oh, I'm, I'm drawing these beautiful micro organisms that I just think are beautiful. And, and other than that, I was just kind of trying to experiment and get a handle on material. And it was more of what, it was very formal. It was like more about creating a beautiful image um, and kind of finding my style. 
And then something like this, I was actually inspired by the news and something that happened in my own personal life. And so the whole focal point of this painting is Tatiana the tiger, who was a tiger that escaped from her enclosure in the San Francisco Zoo. Do you remember that story? Yep. Um, and so I got really, and, and at the time, I think I had, okay, so this piece and this piece, this one was inspired by a visit to Las Vegas. And so these are almost around the same time. And I was already like really into big cats. And I went to this like big cat enclosure at the Mirage where Siegfried and Roy used to do their show, but they weren't doing their show at that time because one of them had gotten attacked. And so I did kind of this like crazy abstraction. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's actually a wild cat face in this painting. It's it's there. <laughs> I can see it. You know, I wonder how obvious it is. So another thing that, so then I'll get interested in something, you know, just for how it looks. And then I might even go on trips to like find the subjects that I like and be inspired by that. And then when I started to research animals, I started to really get interested in the idea of camouflage. And even still in my work, that's a huge thing that interests me. Like at what point basically something becomes abstract? Like at what point do you recognize it? Or at what point do you see a face versus seeing a bunch of shapes and colors? You know, like the, the Rorschach ink blot tests. So I was also starting to play deliberately with that in, in pieces like this, but this one's obviously a little more abstract. Um, this one's a little more representational, but I was on my, my big cat phase and this was way before Tiger King. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I felt kind of sad. I know that, you know, I think she actually killed some, some young kids, like teenagers at this zoo, but they felt like the whole situation I felt really sad about. And I was at the zoo like days before this happened. So it also felt kind of personal because then I was like, oh, my God, what if it would have happened on the day that I was there? And so this particular art piece is one that this is actually a little more rare for me that the art has something that's so specifically related to my personal life and the news or, you know, something going on and general culture but that's that's why i wanted to show this one for that reason it's cool and this is another one that um is a little bit personal because i gosh i don't even know what all this other imagery it meant something to me at the time i made this and now i can't even remember like what all these references are but uh, this one has kind of a cool story too. This one, I, I was in the process of making this drawing and I was actually trying to decide whether or not to put that hawk in the drawing. And then I was driving on Los Valley Road and I, I saw a hawk get hit by a car and then it like flew over into this area of buildings and I I happened to have a friend, a colleague who volunteers at the Wildlife Center. She helped me rescue this hawk. Um, so I took it as a sign that I should put the hawk. Like I was literally like working on this right before I saw that. Well, I, was a, like, oh, I feel but I feel I bad saying it, but I'm. It, it's a good thing. Well, yeah, this is horrible. It's a good thing the hawk <laughs> got killed because. That's the, Ooh, that's kind that? of the anchor of the this piece. I mean, your eye obviously goes straight to that before almost anything else. Um, but yeah, I should say the hawk didn't die. Oh, okay. It, it was crazy. The way you saw it get hit, I thought for sure he would have died, but then he... Um, <laughs> now I feel like a bigger <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I, just, no, I just assumed it died. Uh, okay. No, and they took him back to the wildlife care center and they nursed him back to health and were able to free him All back right. into the wild. So it's actually, yeah, it's a good story. It's not as tragic as the, the tiger story. Yeah, this is, they aren't okay. all, yeah, I know good. my work can generally be a little bit dark, but this one is actually kind of a happy ending. And, and my friend who helped me rescue the hawk owns this painting now. 
<laughs> so it's cool. at her house. So then I kind of I hit a um I started, you can probably see something similar. I started to get into big cats and birds and would make their way into a lot of this work around 2011. And I feel like this one was kind of pivotal because I started to do more of the patterns. And so there's the patterns mixing in with more of the representational imagery. And I eventually started to get into work like this that is was way more non-objective where you don't even really have any recognizable subject matter. And that transformation was also personal. It happened at a time when um, my dad passed away in 2010. And I was just on the cusp of getting ready to do this work for a big show. And kind of like I had just ended a body of work and was trying to figure out what to do next. Um, you know, that work that you just saw was obviously a lot more collage based and had lots of animals in it. And I just didn't know what to do. So I just started like getting out a ruler and pencil and making these patterns. And I think I, I kind of just needed to do something. Mind it was mindless yet completely occupying my mind without me having to think about it. And I, I just started doing this series that are all very pattern based and started to get really into that for a while. And you can tell there's still, you know, a vestige of some kind of texture from, from clouds or an animal or something in there. Um, but the whole composition is really guided by this very regular pattern. Um, so I got really interested in that. Um, works like this is also the same body of work. Um, again, I'm also seeing a theme and that I started looking through a lot of my dad's old books and he had books on African art and Native American art. And that has a lot of beautiful geometric pattern in it. So I started to kind of mix the idea of textures from nature in with these patterns um, and started to really love that. I I still have a special place for that body of work. Um, but then I, you know, at a certain point, I'm like, okay, it's like the patterns in these are so, so regular. And I started playing with breaking up the patterns a little bit more or so. Like this one, it starts to look like there's almost like a, a hole inside of the shapes that's kind of bursting out or breaking up the pattern and kind of throwing a little bit more chaos into the pattern. And these are still all a lot of watercolor and painterly washes with color pencil. Uh, a newer material that I've really liked is acrylic gouache and acrylic paint pens. And these really opaque colors, like the little yellow and pink triangles I get with acrylic gouache that gives this really beautiful, vibrant matte color. So that's... I'm no, realizing, it's... yeah, we're probably getting, I should probably wrap it up a little bit on time. Um, but it, it shows you a, a change. I'll probably go through the next few a little more quickly of uh, you still utilizing this idea of pattern. But once I got down this idea of creating the patterns, then trying to create a little more depth within the pattern or, or contrast between organic elements that would break up the pattern. So that now this is taking us all the way to, this is one of my most recent works, um, which now um, this also leads me and maybe I'll, I'll just end on this. I have other slides of other artists work and stuff. So maybe if someone asks about or wants to see stuff about influences, we could talk about that more too. But um, something I should also say that's, always influenced me is teaching. Um, I've been a full-time college art teacher for the last 15, actually, I think I'm going on 16 years. And when I first started, I was teaching a lot of design classes, like two-dimensional design, color theory, classes where there was a lot of emphasis on creating non-objective art and, you know, cut and paste and simple geometric compositions. And I think doing that for years and years kind of also influenced the the starting of these patterns and using a lot of geometry in the work and now again i've i've gotten the opportunity to keep teaching more and more variety of classes and now i'm kind of 
I've started teaching uh, life drawing and figure drawing and I haven't done it in a while in my own work. I, I, I had to take a lot of anatomical figure drawing and things like that for um, biomedical illustration at Long Beach. But, you know, in my own work, you can see like I might insert a little figure in with all of this other stuff here and there, um, but you wouldn't really call it figurative. So now what I really want to do is create more work like this where it might not be obvious to anyone who just looks at it, but to me it was like a figure moving through the pattern and and kind of disrupting it. So well, yeah, I, I was just going to interrupt. I mean, the first thing that I th I see in this is is clothing, <laughs> and that's my I, I'm also as a figurative artist. I probably project that into everything that I look at even if it's not there or if the artist didn't intend it. But that was the very first thing that I saw was clothing moving uh, through space or whatever. And, or, and, you know, it could have just been cloth or, or, or a blanket or whatever. But for me, I somehow <laughs> jumped to some conclusion that it was figurative. So I guess it's some somehow obvious or apparent to some people. Yeah. Yeah, I got the idea. So... I'll, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll just say this and then I'll just try to stop talking. Um, this leads me into one of my other major influences is, has always been supernatural stuff. I was obsessed with horror movies and science fiction movies, like all my life growing up from a young age, probably too young to be watching horror movies and things like that. Um, but I've always been into that and conspiracy theories, unsolved mysteries. I listen to like unsolved mysteries podcasts and supernatural stuff. Um, so that's always been kind of an underlying, like that's in all of my work somehow. Um, and this was influenced by a documentary. I think I actually watched it on Netflix about this guy that supposedly tracked these Bigfoots. <laughs> um, and he called the ones, he, he said that there were different kinds of Bigfoot, like some of them would keep watch during the day and some of them would keep watch overnight, like on this mountainside where their, their, their realm was, where they lived to kind of look out for people. Um, and the ones that kept watch during the day, he called the day watchers. And so then I thought about that iconic footage of like the Bigfoot going through the forest. So it felt like I wanted to create something that was like a figure walking through really dense jungle or plants or forest and looking like it was kind of getting tangled up in it or kind of camouflaged in it. So that's kind of where I, I, I want my direction to go. I feel like I have, I, I need to give up the really intricate geometric patterns. I've been doing that for a while. <laughs> so I do want to go a little more figurative and also, I'm going to skip through a few of these things and go to this one. Yes. This is also a <laughs> throwback of kind of where I want to go. Because also, you know, I think we all can't be helped but be influenced by just generally what's going on in the world. And I just see, a, I, I kind of have this urge to do things with like skulls and crossbones and things that look like heavy metal cover art. And things like that, just because our world seems so crazy right now. And I don't know, I want to make work that has a little bit more of that feel to it. So. Yeah, well, I you you post you posed that question on Instagram <clears throat> several months back, probably in September, actually. And I remember, I think I jumped in late, but I fully support that decision. <laughs> I think that's a great direction oh, to go yeah. in. Uh, yeah, I think it's a perfect... Uh, uh, approach for your where you're headed yeah thanks thanks so so yeah I guess you know I'll end on there and if anybody has any questions yeah uh, did you see I don't know if you saw um Jeff uh, Clausen joined us and he he made a comment on the previous one the uh, the geometric clothing that 
uh, was or or Bigfoot inspired one, and he he was just dr- drawing a connection to uh, Gustav Klimt. You know, that was a huge oh, artist yeah. that inspired my core group of friends, along with Egon Schiel. And um, I don't know how I didn't see that, but thanks, Jeff. <laughs> it's it's so obvious now. Um, well, I but, know yeah. he's so great to look at for, I mean, I don't, I can't really think, I'm sure there must be, but I can't really think of any other artists that would combine uh, pattern and figures the way that he did. Yeah, totally. Um, and, and it is definitely, yeah, I, I look at his work a lot. I wasn't, you know, directly looking at it when I made this, but I show his work in, you know, life drawing classes and uh, yeah, his work is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, the it, way he can do, like, render the figure and also those beautiful patterns is amazing. Yeah, I thought we were we were special to have, I thought we, like, discovered him when we were young artists and nobody else knew about him. And <laughs> that, <laughs> what a misconception, because, you know, he became such a mainstream, you know, going to any poster store yeah. back in the day. And, you know, it was like Bob Marley and... Uh, and pretty much his his posters um so yeah well um this is awesome i think i'm gonna i'm gonna uh shift back to uh split screen here okay and we have we have a few people still with us nancy i think is here jeff and probably wayne but um if you guys don't have any questions, uh, specific questions for Adrian, I think I wanted to jump in and um, I'm looking at my list. Sorry for looking down. Um, okay. Oh, okay. So this was, okay. You actually, you did a pretty good job answering all the questions I sent ahead of time. Nice, nice work. Um, I think, I think one of the ones that, that I want to go back to, cause this is a part of the conversation that we've had before is like, at what point does meaning appear or, or, uh, come out of your work? Is it, you know, is it beforehand? Is it during the, the, the process or is it after the fact? Um, and I can relate to mostly the during and after I have a hard time relating to thinking about something I want to say and, and, and creating that thing and then having it turn out to be that, you know, what I intended in the, in the first place. Like I, I have a hard time working that way. And it seems like you, because you embrace uh, chance and spontaneity and you're kind of mashing up a bunch of uh, different types of imagery, again, abstract and representational, I almost think it would be a disservice to have any preconceived notions ahead of time. And it would be way more interesting, I think, to either um, go with maybe some preconceived ideas of like, okay, I want to put animals in this or I want to put some, you know, uh, the hawk story was great or or Bigfoot or whatever. Like, you know, you're drawing or pulling uh, subject matter or references to news and pop culture. But they're not you know that's not driving the the meaning behind the piece i think your work's a perfect example of something that you know like the meaning i think could happen once you're you've you've finished the piece and you kind of step back and and look at it and to go one step further i almost think maybe you shouldn't even attach a particular meaning or narrative to your work because there's so much there for all of us, the, the viewers to, um, to come up with in our own minds. And, you know, that, that might be the most fun part. So that was my super long winded question, but like, at what point does meaning become apparent to you? Like before, during, or after? Does that make does that I sense? Think, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's, Usually before, actually, because I don't know if it's just me being trained from, you know, going through school and studying art, but it's like, you know, you're usually trained to like you have an idea and and sometimes it's not a specific idea, but I usually have kind of a general idea. Like even if I am collaging things together, it's like I'll col- they're collaged together in a certain way that makes them have a similar meaning um i feel like 
maybe for each body of work, it's a little different. Like some, okay. I do a lot more just experimentation without thinking about it. And then the meaning comes a little more after, uh, Sometimes, like now, I feel like it, it's such a weird time to be an artist. I don't really have any shows or anything mm -hmm. coming up, and not really anyone's exhibiting. And, and I'm kind of using that as just freedom to just experiment. But then I kind of yeah. feel like I'm doing like these little experimental pieces. But then in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, I want to do work about like Satanism and and government conspiracies <laughs> and. Like, so then I'll kind of also be like culling like images for that and maybe making little sketches for like that more specific body of work while yeah. experimenting. Well, there's certainly endless material out there right now <laughs> to pull from. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's all coming together. Like everything I've ever been afraid of happening in the world, it's just all coming together. <laughs> it's all, yeah, it's, it's pretty much all there. Um, the only difference though, is in your work, the images of something that would seem post-apocalyptic, there's at least, uh, a beauty or, a, a, a source of light or an ambiguity uh, about it. Uh, I wish there was, <laughs> I wish that was the case for our reality. It, it, things don't look as, as pretty or as uh, ambiguous. You know, and that's another thing I struggle with too, is, I have thought about like kind of in the work I make now, I, I want to find a way to make it grittier and I want to not be so concerned with beauty. Yeah. Um, Cause I have always just, it, whether or not it's my own weird sense of what looks beautiful in my art, I, I do feel like I, I like labor and labor on my drawings until they look a way that I'm satisfied with. And in a sense, that's like, to me, they look beautiful, but sometimes they aren't really about beautiful things. And I don't know, I, I don't know how to not do that as an artist. Yeah. Or I don't know if it's important to do that. Um, I've been wanting to experiment with surfaces. I got a bunch of pieces of leather. Like I, I'm kind of sick of like making things in rectangles. Like I feel like the rectangle is too clean and I want to make things that look like, I don't know, hides or something that are hanging on the wall that have huh. colors and textures on them. I don't know. Well, and the, and uh, you didn't show us any of the um, circular canvases that you worked on. Oh. So um, it, it's just interesting. You're, you know, you're, that's kind of relevant to what you're talking about now is it, yeah, it seems like you're looking for a new, yeah, a new frame to work within. And yeah. I, I, I can... Display and... Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Um, I just feel like, I don't know, it, especially for our day and age, and now that we don't necessarily have, like, that pristine gallery space, I don't know, just thinking yeah. of... And then you get into, like, then you aren't just a two-dimensional artist. You're thinking of, like, an installation or... Right. I don't know, painting on fabric and then draping it over... Oh man, I yeah, if somebody could animate your some of your pieces, especially the ones pre like heavy geometry, well, even those would be cool too, but I think that would be fascinating is, is to see any of that in motion. Uh yeah. it might cause a seizure, but if the mo <laughs> if the movement was soft and 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 flowing and that like that would be super cool <laughs> so now you so there you go that's your next uh you're gonna have to learn some 3d animation techniques yeah <laughs> yeah i've been thinking about that it's like oh man i i wish i had like all the time in the world and i would learn like a little yeah. bit more sculpture and animation and i'd love to incorporate other media but i don't There's know only so much time yeah. So, well, um, let's see. I'm just going to check one last time to see if there are any other questions. Nancy I said she you. had one, but I'm not, I'm not seeing that show up. So, well, um, not a problem. I think uh, what'll be great is we'll we'll post this as a replay. 
so people can watch it and um, leave comments and uh, questions uh, and it's just kind of ongoing so you know we can answer them through the comments essentially is what I'm saying so but but thank you um, well looks like maybe Nancy might chime in but in the meantime I just want to thank you for being our the, you know the first featured artist to talk to our group um, this is a huge this is a huge part of uh, why I'm on Facebook now is to connect with other artists and to connect uh, other artists with other artists and to just share stories and insights and um, I haven't I haven't done that in so long I've been so isolated and I'm talking about you know pre pandemic and um, obviously it's only gotten worse so I think being able to do this even though it's not in person this is the next best thing and um this is this is awesome it's just been it's been a pleasure to to have you and um thank you so much <laughs> yeah oh well, gosh thank you so much for giving me this opportunity yeah really fun to talk with you you ask great questions and yeah you've made me think about a lot more ideas as well so i'm excited to get back in the studio and yeah and i think um you know one of the things I'm not going to get into it too much, but one of the things inside the the drawing club, which is separate from the Facebook group, is um, having these drawing challenges uh, each month. And I, I, what I'd really like to do for this month is um, to have people explore or at least just take a look at your artwork and see if they can pull uh, something out of it and and explore it just pull one piece of it out and and see if there's a place for it in their art practice um and you know it might there i feel like there's so much there's so much in your work um to to pull from that um you just you don't know what might set you on a completely different path and i already you know just revisiting your work and looking at it for a lot longer um and going you know from piece to piece there's so many things where I, it's like I just want to try that, or I just want to try what she did there. Like this is so cool. All right, I gotta give. Yeah, you know, I, I have to explore this some more. Um, it's, and it's just a it's a reminder of. Um, I think there's so much exploration that happens in your work, and um, that's something that I want to bring into mine uh, for sure. So, th thanks for being an inspiration, and I hope other people are able to. Uh, to, to get something out of this and um thank you again <laughs> yeah me too you know i'd love to see what you guys do all right for your <laughs> I think maybe you'd like share what we'll you share yeah typically we we share uh, the the highlights uh, after the fact on the on the facebook page and the group so um yeah so so you'll get to you'll get to check it out <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again for having me. It's been really fun. And thank you for everyone who came. All right. Sorry to get thank you to everyone who was here, but that's all right. And, and again, the replay will be there. So more people will probably chime in and, and check it out. But um, thank you, Adrian. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Good night.